welcome to Board Games with Niramas. Today it's time to take a look at one of my absolute favorite games of all time, Star Wars Imperial Assault. And as you can see, Draco is really into his role of a Jedi here. So uh, this is going to be a fun game for me to do both a how to play and a run through for. And so I'm going to start with sort of a how to play video here because this game is quite massive uh, It's not that hard to play actually, but you, there's a lot of small rules and so on that you need to keep track of So it could be a good idea to uh, Well, I'm going to split this video in three parts So this is the first one where we will go through the uh, setup and the rules how to set up a campaign uh, that could be a bit tricky in the beginning to understand how it works. If you want to go straight for the gameplay run through, then just click the link up here. Or if you're on a uh, mobile phone, then go to the description. Uh, there will be a link there as well. But um, for you that want to learn a bit on how to set up this game and how to get it going, let's start looking at the components. And now, um, this is going to be for the base game, but uh, I mixed everything up. I have all the expansions and figure packs, so it's, it's quite hard for me to separate everything. And so I don't really see any point in that anyway, because I really, I mean, the base game itself is quite uh, huge. You can have a lot of hours of fun play from it, but still I, I recommend you to get uh, at least the main expansions. You don't need to get all the figure packs, uh, but I'm going to show you here, here's all the uh, figures and as you can see some of them are painted and some are not, some of them are base painted, some of them are quite badly painted to be honest and basically this is the first game that I started painting so some of them are really bad painted, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to get back to them and, and redo some of them, uh, some of them I'm, I'm quite happy about, I mean I'm going for tabletop quality and I'm never going to be able to spend the time needed to really do those perfect paintings. So I'm quite happy with the overall look. Uh, I mean, if you compare this to the grey uh, non-painted, then this is a lot better, of course. So if you're a painting uh, pro, then you're probably going to sit there and think, Oh my God, what has he done with his figures? But just ignore that, please. Let's focus on the actual game, because this is that uh, it, this is not a painting video. I will do some of them uh, later on because I'm starting to get the hang of painting and I'm working on on uh, Mansion of Madness uh, right now. But uh, let's get to this game. So uh, the setup here for a campaign. Well, first of all, um, you can play this game from two to five players. Uh, you could play it as a um, I play a game then you would have four uh, rebel players and they would have one of these heroes each and in that case uh, I tried it a bit but I think it's a, I think it's actually this game runs good and in two player version I, I like these kind of games where one where it's everyone against one then I prefer actually two or maybe three players because with four rebel players they will all have to sit there and discuss I mean, if you do that, then I will do this. It takes forever, and especially as the Imperial player, uh, the one on the other side, it gets quite boring. Uh, so, so I prefer, uh, I mean, a two-play game runs very smooth. And in this run-through that I'm going to do in the next video, I'm going to use uh, Draco, it's going to be Rebel player, of course, as you can see, and I will be the Imperial player. And so Draco is going to have two characters that he will uh, play uh, at the same time. And they have activation tokens, so uh, right now he would have two activations per hero in a four player or five player game, then each hero would only have one activation, they can act once during each round. And so to set up the game, or set up a campaign, we will take a look. Uh, now we have this, I mean there's a rule book, there's a learn to play book, this is the campaign guide for the base game. So this is all the campaigns for the base game, it's quite a lot. And so uh, what you do is you start off uh, by the rebel player will uh, choose characters. 
and there's a few to choose from. Now if you're going to play as two uh, characters I would recommend that you have like this you have one melee and one uh, with a rifle ranged sort of. So you have some balance there and um, each hero is going to start off with uh, a starter weapon. Uh, each character has this deck of nine cards or uh, more in the expansions but in the base game it's nine and these are you can purchase these during the campaign with XP because you will get XP as the game progresses. Uh, but everyone starts off with a basic weapon. So Fen Signus here, he has a infantry rifle. Uh, and this works like the, the, the colors here are going to determine which dice he's going to be attacking with. So he's going to have a blue and a green. And so if we take a look at his character sheet, uh, we can also see that he's defending with a black die. Now he has health, which is just health basically. Uh, he will take wound markers like these during uh, when he takes uh, injuries. And so uh, when he gets down to zero in health, or sort of he gets 12 wounds, then you would flip this card and he's wounded. And what it happens? I mean, he, he can survive another 12 before, before he, they never die, really. Uh, they just withdraw they, because he will come back later in the campaign. But um, he will be a bit, uh, he will lose some stats here, lose some special abilities when he's wounded. And also he can't heal from wounded to back to healthy again. And so uh, he has an endurance value. Uh, endurance uh, means basically that that's how much strain he can take. Strain is a, it looks like this, it's like they strain themselves to do things, like special abilities or move extra far. Uh, so he can take up to four strain. Also when he does the rest action, which is one of the actions you can do, I will get into that later. Uh, but when he does the rest, rest action, then he will heal strain or damage up to four. Uh, he has a speed of 4, so when he does a move action, or sort of getting movement points, then he would get 4 movement points, so he can move 4 spaces. Uh, now in this game, every every time you are activating a hero, by doing, using this, you flip it to the red side to show that he's act been activated. Uh, what you do is you get 2 actions. These actions could be to move, or get movement points, is the proper uh, explanation actually, because uh, let's say you get four movement points, you get what your speed is, then he could move two steps and then he could do his other action to attack and then he could move two steps more. So that's why I would call it getting movement points. And so in, uh, let's say he could, uh, yeah, he could move and then move again. Uh, he could attack and then attack again. And that is a special thing for the rebel heroes. The uh, let's say the stormtroopers here, they can't do that. They can either move, move, or move, attack, or attack, move. But they can't attack twice, unless uh, there's some... Some units have it as a special ability that they can attack twice in, uh, in activation. Also, um, regarding the actions, you could rest, which is also something you could do as a hero, a rebel hero. Uh, you can't do that with an ally, because the rebels could have allies like Luke Skywalker or Han Solo. They can't rest, unless stated on the card, of course. And as the same goes for the Empire's troop, uh, they can't rest as an action. Now, the heroes could also interact out on the map with these crates. So they could pick up a crate, and that would give them 50 more credits at the end of the round, which they can use to purchase uh, you know, new weapons and armors and uh, items and so on. Uh, so they get a, some more money by picking up these crates, but they also get a crate card from this crate deck. And uh, that could be like a hand grenade or a med pack or something that they can use during the active uh, uh, mission that they're on. Now they can also interact, let's say, with a terminal like this, like a computer. And when they do that, they might need to hack it, for example. In some scenarios, I mean, this varies depending on which scenario you're on. And if, let's say, Fen needed to do that, then he would interact, let's say, with the computer. Then he would, he has these uh, symbols down here, the fist, uh, the eye, and the uh, screwdriver. And then he would use, perhaps, his uh, eye, his sort of uh, intelligence to, or insight, it's called, to hack the computer. Then he would throw a 
He would roll a blue and a green die, and he needs to get one of these surges, or perhaps more, it's stated in the campaign guide for that particular scenario. But uh, enough of that, let's go over to the uh, Imperial side. The Imperial player has a deck of uh, like this, and these are of course expansions in here as well, so that's why it looks like this, it's a lot of them. Uh, let's say here I have a Royal Guard, uh, well, that's another Royal Guard, here's some ATST of course, and these cards represent the figure that is out on the board, like in this case with the first uh, scenario here, uh, I have three Stormtroopers here, they're represented by this card of Stormtroopers, so this is a unit of Stormtroopers, and uh, you can see here that has three figures in it. Well, so when, when it's my turn, when it's the Imperial player's turn to activate, I would exhaust this card, which is tapping it like this. Then I get to move all of those, or act with all of those uh, three Stormtroopers. Uh, they, could, they all get two actions separately, so I have to go with one guy, do two things, and then two things with the next guy, and so on. Uh, on the other hand, the probe droid here, he is alone, so uh, the unit just consists of the probe droid. So when I activate this, only the one figure on the board is going to be able to act. And so the map is built by uh, modular pieces. It's like a puzzle like this. It's just really nice. You can uh, mix and match this and you will get different. Now this is a, a really small map for this uh, sort of introductory uh, scenario. Later on you will get huge maps, uh, outdoor, indoor and so on. Uh, you could be on a spaceship and, and uh, all that stuff. And uh, that is really nice, and you will also, you will see that in the, let's see, for this campaign here, there's the aftermath, it's the first one, you will see here which pieces are used, down here you have, a, all the pieces have, uh, map tiles have numbers and letters, so you can find them, and also here you can see how to connect them, and you will also see here, as the, this is just for the Imperial player, the Imperial player will do this, uh, this is secret from the Rebel player, and that's one of the really fun things about this game is that there's uh, events happening during the mission, during the play, uh, that the Rebel player doesn't know about. The Imperial player can read up on this uh, ahead and know when things are going to happen and plan ahead. But the Rebel player will get surprises, and I actually really love that uh, aspect of this game. Uh, when you're the uh, Rebel player, it's really fun because, it, well... You open a door, you break down some uh, computer, you do something, and all of a sudden uh, something happens. Uh, on the Imperial player, on the other hand, which is my favorite actually, then you get the whole uh, feeling of I know something that the other player doesn't know, and I'm going to surprise them when they do something. Uh, I might get reinforcements, I, I might inflict some uh, condition on them, and so on. And so you have this red box where you have the event summary, where you as the Imperial player, you will be able to remind you of uh, when stuff happens, what is going to be the effect. And you also have a mission briefing, which you will read out loud to the Rebel player to let them know what the mission rules are. This could vary, so it's sort of a base rule set for the game. But then that could be overwritten by the campaign uh, rules. So. Let's say normally you maybe you can do this and that with a door uh, like this, but may, and then in the campaign it might like this campaign it says that doors are locked to Imperial figures. So in this uh, scenario, um, the Imperial player cannot open the door or the doors. I would say you never know. Maybe there's other doors in here. Uh, that's for the Rebel player to find out during the the play. Alright, that was a lot of information at once. Uh, well, we also have a starting point. This blue square is also put down for the starting where the heroes are going to start on the mission. Um, and you can also see the starting troops are out here. Like here's the stormtroopers, the droid, and you can see they are out there on the map. Uh, you have some crates and some terminals here. And you can have all kinds of different... There are also these generic symbols here, they could represent different things uh, that will be out on the map in different scenarios. So I think that was the basic uh, things. Here's also this counter is quite nice. Uh, there's wheels here so you can turn like this. 
and this is to keep track of two things which round you're in which is the green number here um, because a lot of missions are timed based so the, reb the rebels have to do something before the time runs out or it could be the other way around as well that the imperial player has time against him and have to uh, complete certain objectives before the time runs out and on the left side here the red number or the orange number you have the amount of threat that the Imperial player has. Now threat is sort of a currency to be able to put units in. Uh, if you take a look at the droid here again, he has a number three up here, that means he costs three threat to deploy for the Imperial player. Uh, so if he's killed out here, then I, he would go to my reserve hand and then I would be able to get him out again once I gathered enough threat and I would get threat. Uh, we have a campaign summary here on the back of the scenario manual. Well, you see this is aftermath the first scenario I will get two the threat level is two which means I get two threat every round now some people are confused by this I've seen on forums and so on but there are two sort of different uh, names here one is threat which is actually the threat that you have on the dial showing the other one is threat level it's how it's sort of your income how much threat are you going to get each round as you can see here one whole playthrough of uh, Imperial Assault, the campaign version, is consists of a lot of different scenarios and you will have, uh, the, the first one is always the same in the base game and then depending on how that goes you're going to have different missions later on and depending on how that goes you're going to get different missions here and at the end you're going to have a big finale where uh, of course it's going to come down to who is going to win the struggle for the galaxy. And you could also have some forced missions here, uh, but uh, that's not, an, uh, that's, well, some, sometimes you have, sometimes you don't. It depends on what happens during the campaign, so. Uh, you also have side missions here, so uh, those are chosen by the rebel player. Uh, they are randomized, you will, let's see here, uh, you will, uh, at the start of the campaign setup, you will put out a bunch of these, you will uh, get to, randomly select some grey ones, uh, which are sort of, you can get reward cards. Uh, the green ones that give you, let's say, this one for example, this is a side mission. And as you can see here, it could say uh, side mission, page 13, core game. And then you would look up thir page 13 in the core, in the book here. You would find how to set it up and the rules and everything. And the reward, if the rebels do this and they complete it, is Luke Skywalker as an ally. So, uh, but th then also there could be, the Imperial player could also put in side missions, I will get to that later. And you also have one side mission per player, so this is for example, this is Fen Cygnus, this is his mission, sort of a backstory on, on how he, he became this, this uh, rebel fighter and so on. And if you complete it, you will get a reward card that is good for him, that some special ability just for him. Then uh, also, uh, if we go to the uh, Imperial side, just like the Rebel Heroes have in these nine card deck with skills that they will get during the campaign, they will be able to purchase with XP. Um, also, the uh, Imperial player has one deck like this, and he, the Imperial player chooses one of these this sort of themed uh, different kinds of decks there are. And uh, let's see here, for example, for one XP, uh, I could get an attachment, that's something I could put onto the droid for example, and the droid would have this until he dies, then I would get it back and be able to put it on some other unit. This one would give me some extra abilities for the droid. So there's this currency of XP or experience, uh, that it's the same for both the uh, Rebel and the Imperial player. Then also uh, there's uh, credits, which is the currency for the rebel player where the rebel player can go into these decks and we will start with the one deck that we'll get later on shown by the campaign manual will show which deck you can purchase from you can purchase all kinds of different upgrades to your weapon new weapons uh, uh, some armor and so on then it will have a cost of like 500 credits on this one and depending on how it goes if the uh, rebel player wins a scenario you will get more xp and more credits of course 
And then there's uh, one last currency in the game, and that's influence. The, at the start of the setup, the Imperial player will get to choose six different decks of three cards each. And these have different theme, different sort of like Lord Vader's command. This, of course, has something to do with uh, Darth Vader. And so they have a cost, like this one costs one influence. So the Imperial player will, will get influence uh, depending on how the mission ends. And so he will be able to purchase these as well. And that happens between the uh, missions. So you will play a mission one to two or three hours. Then you go into this um, sort of middle uh, in between where you can the rebel player purchases items. Uh, both player, uh, both players, or all the players, uh, get to get upgrades with experience, and the imperial player gets to use his influence points to get him uh, special cards, special effects, and these could also be side missions that uh, he will uh, force the rebel player to play. All right, uh, so uh, let's say here for starters. Uh, the Imperial player here will start with one skill that has no XP cost, so that's a free start. This Prey Upon Doubt, where this card can be exhausted, which means it can be used once each round, and it will give effects. You will see that in the round through later on. Uh, then, of course, the map itself has some uh, special uh, places. I will see if I can zoom in here, just to go through that a bit quick here. Like these red lines, I mean these are some walls of course, the black ones. The red lines are impassable borders, so you can't move through them or you can't shoot through them. There's some lines that are split up, that means you can see through them, so you can shoot, but you can't move through them. Uh, down here we have some blue area, this is water, so this is difficult terrain. And so for the stormtrooper to be able to move out of the water, he would have to spend two movement points to go here instead of one as normally when he moves around, the same goes for going into the water. So there's all kinds of these small uh, rules and settings and so on that could be a bit tricky to, to uh, take it all in at first when you start playing this game, but it comes quite fast and, and the gameplay is so much fun and you really get into the story and so on. Uh, I can really recommend getting some kind of plastic like this also. This is of course extra, it doesn't come with the game. And so you can keep all these uh, little markers organized in some fashion. Alright, so that was sort of the basic setup. Now I'm going to mention one more thing before we go to the run through. And uh, that's the dice. The, the game comes with all these kinds of dice here. And of course it's a dice game basically, but then of course there's also a lot of strategy involved in how you place your troops and, and how you do things. But you will have the black dice to defend yourself with these shields. Uh, you will be attacking, depending on the weapon you have, you will you'll be using different dice. And if we take a look at the four attack dice here, um, the blue one is sort of the ranged die. It has a lot of high numbers, the numbers are called accuracy, and that's how you determine if you hit something, if you shoot at it. And so let's say in this case you have a 5, you could shoot for five, a distance of 5 squares on the map, and you would hit your target. If you don't, then you're just going to miss. Uh, so the blue die is the range die, sort of the snipers have this one of them. Uh, the green die sort of in between, it has some distance on accuracy on it. The yellow one has quite low accuracy and the red one doesn't have anything at all. So this is just this is the damage die. You could do three this is damage symbols. You could do three damage with this one in one roll. In one just using one die. Uh, the green has some of that as well of course uh, all the dice but then there's the third symbol here which is the search this little lightning and the search is sort of a special ability you can it's sort of you can use it depending on what kind of effects you have like this weapon here you could spend the search to do an extra damage or you can spend the search to do an extra accuracy so you can reach further so it depends on the weapon and the special abilities you have what you can do with the surges 
So the yellow one has a lot of surges, the green one has some, the blue one has some, and the red one only have one. So they are different, and so depending on the dice, you can sort of get a feel for, say you have a sniper rifle, then you will have perhaps two blue dice. You will be able to shoot far away, but you won't do as much damage perhaps as if you had a lightsaber and you were close to someone, you had two red dice. And defending, uh, we have the, I mean, the, the hits here, the hits like this, the damage, they are countered by shields. These are shields. So they they sort of, you sort of calculate if you get four hits and you have two shields from the defender, then you would have two damage inflicted. Now you also have this symbol, which is the evade. This one cancels out one of those lightning surges, right? And so you could defend against them as well. Now the some of the uh, sort of the force users, the Jedi's and so on, some other guys, they have the white die instead to defend themselves with. This one has a blank, so that's nothing, one in six. Uh, but it also has this one, which is the dodge. Then you would evade all the damage you sort of. Uh, use your force or use your instincts to be able to jump out of the way, not get hit at all. Uh, it has some mixes of shields and evades, so you can both block damage and you can cancel surges, which means the, that will be less damage totally, uh, or less effects and so on. And so, uh, let's see, one more thing before we go to the run-through, it's this mobile app I'm going to talk about, it's called Campaign Tracker. And I think it's fan made, uh, just some fans made it, it's really awesome. Uh, it will keep track of everything you do in the game, you will have a setup, you will tell the app, oh I'm playing with Fan Cygnus and Diala Pasil, that's the heroes. Uh, I will also tell it that the Imperial players are using the deck of subversive tactics, uh, which are these cards. And so I can tell the app what equipment is bought, and right now there's an infantry rifle and there's a plastic staff, that's the starting weapons. Uh, what agenda cards are used, that's the one you use with influence as the Imperial player. And you can get special rewards as well later on. And also the mission here, now, right now we're going to play Aftermath, it's in progress. And then we will see here also that we have threat 2, which means we get a threat level of 2, we get 2 threat every round. If I click this I can tell the app if the Imperial one or if the Rebel one. And depending on that, it will do calculating the uh, XP for uh, everyone, and the rewards, and the credits, and the influence, and also, also I can insert extra credits here, depending on if the rebels were able to uh, pick up some of those crates during the mission. So we get 50 credits extra for each of those. So uh, that app is really handy, I can really recommend it. Uh, I don't know if it's out for iPhone, uh, I don't use that myself, but on Android you can find it on Google Store. Campaign tracker, it's called, and it has this uh, lightsabers crossing signal. Uh, you can find it by that. All right, so I think that was sort of a quite quick, but then still some of the information before we get started. So uh, I don't have to have 30 minutes of explaining before the run through starts. I could have it in this video instead. And so I hope you will go now and watch the run through over here. You can click it here or if you're on a mobile device, you can find it in the description. And I hope you will like the video, subscribe to the channel, please. Uh, tell me in the comments if I missed something, if I'm doing something wrong and so on. And please share the video with your friends and have a nice evening or morning or whenever you're watching this. Take care. Bye bye.